Good morning and welcome to another Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we are doing Illustrative Math Grade 8 Unit 7 Lesson 13 Practice Problems. So the first thing we're asked to do here is write each number in scientific notation. Scientific notation again is one digit in front of the decimal place and times a power of 10 to get the number where we want it to be. So one digit in front of the decimal place for this first one, 1.47 times 10 to the power of, how many spots did we move the decimal point? One, two, three, four. Eight point three times ten to the power of this time we're dealing with a small number, we're moving the decimal point in the opposite direction, so our power will be negative. One, two, three, four spots. Our next one will be 7.6 times 10 to the power of how many spots did we move the decimal? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Small number again, 3.8 times 10 to the negative 1, 2. 0.38 will be 3.8 times 10 to the negative. How many spots did we move it? Just one. 3.8. We will again have 3.8. In scientific notation, we do need a power of 10. How many spots do we have to move the decimal point here? None. What number is none? Zero. We move that decimal point zero spots. G, 3.8 yet again, times 10 to the power of how many spots are we moving this decimal point? 3, 6, 9, 12. H, 9 times 10 to the power of going to be a negative because this is a small number it's less than one how many spots are we moving the decimal point one two three four five six seven eight nine ten nine times ten to the negative ten next problems here are perform some calculations Express your answer in scientific notation. Okay, this problem is addition. When we're adding, we can't add the exponents or subtract the exponents. Those rules don't cover addition. However, these powers are the same. 10 to the 5 and 10 to the 5 are the same number, so this problem is very similar to 2x plus 6x. What's 2x plus 6x? 8x. 2 times 10 to the 5 plus 6 times 10 to the 5 is 8 times 10 to the 5. Now, 4.1 times 10 to the 7 times 2. Do we really need those parentheses? Not really. We can use the commutative property of multiplication to move this 2 around so that this would be the same as 2 times 4.1 times 10 to the 7. And then all we have to do 
is multiply the 4.1 times the 2, which is 8.2 times 10 to the power of 7. This next one is very similar to that. We can do 3 times 1.5. 3 times 1.5 is 4.5 times 10 to the power of 11. Now, this one's a little trickier. We are raising 3 times 10 to the power of 3 to a power. Multiplying this 3 times 10 to the 3, well, raising 3 times 10 to 3 to a power is the same as multiplying it by itself this many times. So we have 3 times 10 to the 3 times 3 times 10 to the 3. The easiest first step for this is this really means we are squaring each of these inner terms. So it is 3 squared times 10 to the power of 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. 10 to the power of 3 squared, when we are raising to a power, we add the exponents, or we multiply the exponents, sorry. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times 10 to the power of 3 all squared is 9 times 10 to the power of 6. Okay, multiplying again. The powers of 10 are the same, but we're multiplying this time, so it's not going to be the same as this upper one. So I'm going to quickly rewrite this with things grouped differently. 9 times 3, grouping that 9 and 3 together, times 10 to the power of 6, times 10 to the power of 6. So now we have 9 times 3, which is 27, and then 10 to the power of 6 times 10 to the power of 6. When we are multiplying like bases, we add the exponents. 10 to the power of 6 plus 6, which is 12. Our next question, Jada is making a scale model of the solar system. The distance from Earth to the moon is about 2.389 times 10 to the power of 5 miles. The distance from Earth to the sun is about 9.2. 296 times 10 to the power of 7 miles. She decides to put Earth on one corner of her dresser and the moon on another corner about a foot away. Where should she put the sun? On a windowsill in the same room, in her kitchen, which is down the hallway, a city block away. How far away is it? Well, if this distance here the distance from Earth to the moon, this distance is represented by one foot. We have to find out how many feet away it is from the Earth to the sun, which is this distance. So what this becomes is a division problem. We have to find out how many feet away this is and if this is one foot we have to do 9.296 times 10 to the 7 divided by 2.23 see if I can copy a little better 2. 389 times 10 to the power of 5.
so for this, first we have to divide the first part of this, 9.296 divided by 2.389, which everyone knows is about 3.9. Not leaving very much space for work here. 3.9 times 10 to the power of, we're dividing, so we subtract the exponents. 7 subtract 5 is 2. So the number of feet away she has to put her model of the sun is 3.9 times 10 to the power of 2 feet away. Well, how far away is 3.9 times 10 to the power of 2? 10 to the power of 2, 10 times 10 is 100. So what is 3.9 times 100? Or just think about moving the decimal point. 3 decimal point was here, we're moving at two spots, one, two, 390 feet. So, how far away does she have to put her model of the sun? 390 feet. That, I've never seen a bedroom with a window sill that's 390 feet away. I've never even seen a kitchen 390 feet away from a bedroom in someone's house. So the answer for this one is going to have to be a city block away. Our next problem says, here is a graph for one equation in a system of equations. Write a second equation for the system so it has infinitely many solutions. Well, before we can do that, we have to know the equation of this. So that's going to look like y equals mx plus b. We have to find our slope. We have to find our intercept. The y-intercept is negative 2. What is our slope? Slope is rise over run. The rise, oh, that's not a negative two, that's a negative three. Sometimes counting gets a little tricky. Um, slope is rise over run. We rise three and we run two from this nice point and this nice point. Rise three, run two, three over two. Y equals three over two X, subtract three. So if we want a second equation, so it has infinitely many solutions, what are they going to look like if there are infinitely many solutions? The two lines have to be right on top of each other they have to be the same line. Second equation for the system, so it has infinitely many solutions. Y equals three over two X subtract three. Write a second equation whose graph goes through the point zero two so that the system has no solutions. So if we wanna go through the point zero two, if we want this system to have no solutions, the two lines have to be parallel. In order to be parallel, they have to have the same slope. So we know our new line is going to have the same slope. What's going to be different? The y-intercept. If it goes through this point, what is the y-intercept? It's two. Second equation is graph goes through zero two, so if the system has no solutions, 
y equals 3 over 2x plus 2. Write a second equation whose graph goes through 2, 2. So now, I'm going to erase the other points we've put there. Second equation whose graph goes through the point 2, 2, 2, 2. That's this point. And the system has one solution at the point 4, 3. 4, 3. So we have two points here. We are going to have to figure out the equation of the line that goes through these two points. First thing we're going to want to figure out for that is the slope. Let me write down our two points over here. Our points are 2, 2, and 4, 3. To find out the slope, y2 subtract y1, 3 subtract 2, over x2 subtract x1, 4 subtract 2, 3 subtract 2 is 1, 4 subtract 2 is 2. We know our new equation is going to be y equals 1 half x because we know our slope is 1 half plus some b. We have to find out where this is going to intersect. Now, there are a few different ways we can do this. We can substitute one of these points in and solve for b. We can also try to look at the graph and say if this has a slope of 1 half. Going forward from the point 2, 2, it went up 1, forward 2. So going in the other direction, it's going to have to go down 1 and back 2 which puts the point right here. That gives us a y-intercept of 1, which means our equation is going to be y equals 1 half x plus 1. That's our second equation whose graph goes through the point 2, 2. So if the system has one solution at the point 4, 3. Okay, that's our last problem of this. This has been another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math.